Hi, everybody. Hello there. Jerry. Linda. We're the Village's Newcomers, and uh, we bring you topics of interest to people that live in the Villages, people that want to live in the Villages, and just senior citizens everywhere. So thanks for tuning in. Today is probably the most important video we've done in a long, long time. Yeah. We get mail on a regular basis asking us, how much does it cost to actually live here? And folks will want to know everything. They ask me about my cable bill. They ask us about the, the HOAs, HOAs, HOAs or amenity, amenity fees. fees. They ask about taxes. We did a show on this, how long? Oh, probably a year ago. About a year ago. Maybe. And we did the best we could, but today we think we have a better picture for you. We're gonna go into more detail on all of the costs. And if you stay tuned until the end, we're gonna have a grand total for you and tell you how much per month you can expect to pay if you live here. The numbers we give you today are our personal numbers. Your numbers may be different because you have different circumstances. Yeah, I mean, I think a great many of the people that live here have, have homes that are paid for. You know, when you're age 65, hopefully you've been able to pay off your home. Mortgages come in various lengths, but 20, 25, 30 years. At 65, maybe you've got that paid off. So those numbers won't be included here. But we're going, to, and also a car, you know, a car. You may have your car paid for. Uh, so you're not gonna have car payments or house payments in these numbers that you get today. You may wanna get a pencil because we're gonna throw out a lot of numbers and we'll give you a total at the end. Let's start with property tax. Everybody pays property tax. It's based upon the assessed value of your home. When you come in and buy a pre-owned home, that home will be reassessed at the time you buy it. So your taxes are gonna be a little higher than the person that lived there before you. So take that into account. Our home is five years old our taxes run $3,600 a year. So on our monthly budget, that adds $300. There's also a district fee, and we pay once a year, and uh, according to your property value. And it, we pay about uh, $600 a year, which is $50 a month. Homeowner's insurance, of course you need that wherever you live. Mm -hmm. uh, some folks think it's more expensive in Florida because there are threats of severe weather more frequently than some other states. We pay hurricane insurance, we have sinkhole insurance, we have catastrophic ground collapse, we have flood insurance, probably something else. But in grand total, our insurance runs about $1,300 a year, and that comes to about $108 a month. Another fee that uh, everyone will have that lives here in the villages is the amenity fee. The, uh, of course, that's the, you know what it is if you're watching this video, the amenity fee pays for a lot of the uh, extras that we get here. Our amenity fee is based upon the fact that we moved in two years ago at that time for designer homes the fee was $160. So that's our amenity fee. That's about $1,920 a year. Again, uh, $160 a month. We live in an all electric home. Uh, the cooking, the clothes dryer, the heat, it's all electric. And we pay an electric bill. Ours has been as low as $110 a month. It's been as high as $166 a month. We average about $140 a month for electric. Over the course of a year, that's $1,680. Some people will have gas in the villages. We do not. Our entire village does not have uh, natural gas. If you have gas, that's gonna be an extra bill that's gonna to have to go into your budget. I think the electric bill is great because back home it was twice that much in the winter time. We were Yeah, really I think we mentioned that on our, on our video when we did it before that we were on budget billing back in Indiana on a home that we had gas heat. 
So we had a gas bill and an electric bill, and our electric bill budget was $244 a month. And our gas bill was on budget for about $85 a month. And here, all of our heating and cooling is averaging about $140 a month, so we're, we're happy with that. Lawn maintenance is something that we all have to do. It's in the deed restrictions. We have to have our grass cut, our driveway, our sidewalks, etc., edged. We have to keep the weeds down. We have to uh, blow the grass and clean it up. So that's an expense, unless you do it yourself. If you do your own lawn expense, you're still gonna or lawn maintenance. You're gonna have your some expenses because you're gonna have to have a mower. You're gonna have to have gasoline and oil and uh, you need bags to uh, put the stuff in. So for us, our lawn maintenance for the grass cutting, the edging, the blowing, the weed eating, $50 a month, $600 a year. Another thing you can do yourself is your fertilization, your insect control. We don't. I don't like to deal with the chemicals. I did it for almost the first year. You did. Uh, but now we hire it out, and that cost to, to fertilize our grass, to fertilize our palm trees, to treat for all, any and all insects. And they will come back, if you call them, once in a while Linda will find a few ants trying to come in the lanai. Mm -hmm. um, she'll call and they'll come out and, and spray. That costs $50 a month as well, a total of $600 a year. If you have palm trees, you have to have them taken care of. Palm trees say Florida to me. Some people would not have a palm tree in their yard. I don't think I would have a yard in Florida without one. No, they're beautiful. They are, they're really neat. But there are charges involved. And those charges won't be a regular thing. Uh, you, you're gonna have to budget to take care of them. We had a one-time charge about a year ago to really clean them up because they'd been neglected for a couple of years and that cost me $350. But we're not gonna include that in our, in our charges today because once they are cleaned up, you just have a maintenance of maybe $20 a month, $240 a year to trim the low hanging branches and to uh, make everything look good and keep our palm trees sharp. You may want to have termite control. Termites are notorious for destroying homes. Many people take out a termite policy and have annual inspections down here. Um, that's strictly up to you. If you do that, and I'm not gonna include this in our, in our budget, uh, but it's a $500 one-time charge, give or take, for them to come out, inspect, and write you a policy. It's a, an insurance policy, basically. And then once a year, they'll come and uh, inspect for termites. There's a fee for that as well. Uh, and if, if you don't do that, of course, you won't have to consider that in your budget. How about irrigation water? Good point. That's one of your uh, bigger bills. Irrigation water is the water that we use in our sprinklers to water the lawns. Basically, everybody in the villages has sprinklers. That is fed by a separate source of water, of non-drinkable water. And uh, there's a bill for that. That bill, usually for us, runs three times higher than our drinking water. But for our bill, for irrigation, it runs us about $33 a month on average. And we have regular water, the water we drink, the water we shower with. Even the water that's in your outdoor spigots, that's drinking water. You know, that's not your, uh, what do they call it, non-potable Yeah, anything water. that comes into the house is drinking water. Yeah, yeah that's clean water, and uh, we pay for that. It's much cheaper than uh, the irrigation water. And there's a facility fee, and on top of that facility fee, we pay, uh, a monthly charge, which averages the entire kit and caboodle, $15 a month. Of course, your charge, if you have a bigger yard, it's gonna be more. If you have a smaller yard, it could be less. How could they have a smaller yard? <laughs> It'd be less. But uh, for us, about $15 a month. 
Remember, your numbers are going to be different. And uh, this is just kind of to get you in the ballpark. If water comes into your house, it has to leave. And that's your sewer bill. Now, the sewer bill, boy, in some communities, it's sky high. It hasn't gotten there yet. Uh, in, in our area, we spend about $25 a month on sewer charges. Don't forget about garbage collection. That's right. We pay for garbage collection here in the villages. Our collection has just changed from three days a week with actually four pickups to twice a week now. Mm -hmm. So we get our, our garbage collected twice a week. Uh, there now is no recycling and it costs us $22 a month for garbage collection. That comes out to about $264 a year. You may want a newspaper. I do. I love the newspaper. She reads the newspaper cover to cover every day. I do. There's one here called the Daily Sun. They'll deliver it right to your driveway. Uh, we, we do subscribe. Um, it's $7 a month, $84 a year. So if you take a newspaper, add that to your budget. There's a tea time system. Now I subscribe. That's Most everybody I know subscribes. It's not mandatory and not, uh, not anything you have to do, but it is another way to get $8 from us. So they charge us $8 a month to subscribe. And it is a really neat system. You can go in and, and find all the courses. You can see what tea times are available and you can actually plug yourself in. You can make requests for a week in advance almost and uh, they will a computer will generate you know who gets uh, what that's eight dollars a month to belong to the tea time system i think for us it's money well spent uh, because it really makes getting on the course easier especially uh, during the time when the seasonal residents are here and and the courses are more crowded it also keeps a tab of how many times you've golfed how many times have you golfed this year uh, not as many as last year. Last year I had about 250. Wow. But uh, she's over 100 yeah. this year. Yeah, that's pretty great. <laughs> and you can see all that on the Tea Time system. So so we like it and we do subscribe. Uh, again, $8 a month, uh, and that would be $96 a year. Another thing for you to consider and add to your budget if you're a golfer is a trail pass. It seems unusual sometimes, but if you ride a, in a golf cart on a trail in the villages, you have to pay $4. If I would take my cart that I owned to the golf course to play, I would have to pay a $4 fee. You can walk free, no charge to walk, but if you take your cart on, it's $4. Now, if you were there and you wanted to ride with me, guess what? You have to pay $4 too to ride in my cart with my gas and I've already paid a trail fee. So, you know, yeah. but these courses and these, these trails are nice. We've all played on golf courses where the golf cart paths were, were shoddy, mm -hmm. you know, where there were chuck holes and, and mud and th these are nice trails and they do have to be kept up. So there's a, a trail fee of $4 per time, but you can buy a trail pass. That pass is good for your household, and that's $141 a year. So that's all, you pay that in a lump sum, $141 a year. Uh, that would be about $11.75 a month if you budget that into your budget, but it's well worth it, especially if you play as much golf as she does. <laughs> I don't like to walk. Probably the biggest question we get about uh, budgeting is how much is cable? But it depends. Do you have HBO? Do you have Showtime? Do you take the sports package? You have the Big Ten Network? You know, uh, uh, do you have a house phone on your cable bill? You know, there's so many variables going into a cable bill. Do you have the gold package or the silver package? And your you know. internet coverage. 
fast Oh, speed. Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is expensive. So it's really variable. So I am going to give you our, we have Wi-Fi, we have Spectrum. We have uh, Wi-Fi and we have a pretty standard package with no, uh, what do you call them, premium channels. And we do have a DVR. And our bill is $157 a month. Now, over the course of a year, uh, you know, that's a lot of money. But we came down from 205. We we tried to negotiate. They didn't. Neg- they don't want to negotiate with you anymore. It used no. to be, you you know, you could call them and say, hey, you know what? I'm thinking about dropping you guys. And they'd say, well, how about if we uh, lower your bill a little bit? But no, not anymore. If you no. if you say we're thinking about dropping you, they say, see ya. Yeah, we started so, slashing channels. <laughs> so we dropped uh, all our premium channels. We sent back one DVR, and uh, again. We pay $157 and change uh, every month. Another fee that is kind of exclusive to the villages here is something called the priority membership for the golf and country clubs. Executive courses are free. All the country clubs and the uh, championship courses charge for golf. Now that charge is less if you live in the villages, but it's still a substantial charge to play golf. You can get a little discount on each time you play golf if you have that priority membership. And you can also go to the country club pools with that membership. And it runs about $62 a month for a person, for a single person. They have discounts then for families if you wanna add the whole family on. But the Priority Golf Membership, which gives you a preference over tee times. In other words, if you were, if a lot of people wanted to play, you would get first crack at uh, playing. Uh, $740 a year, that breaks down to about $62 a month. If you're a Gizmo fan, you'll like that pose right there. Isn't that cute? This is him in his natural habitat. <laughs> Puppy dog eyes. Believe it or not, we get people that ask, how much will it cost us for groceries if we live in the villages? Guess what else? Where's the dog food? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, if you have a dog, you can add about $15 onto that charge, <laughs> onto your grocery bill. But uh, it depends on you. You know, do you eat out a lot? If you do, your grocery bill will be less. Um, do you eat steak often? If you buy a lot of steaks or, or uh, do you smoke, you know, uh, do you drink? I mean, liquor, yeah. I mean, you probably spend what? Uh, no, nah, she's, she I doesn't. drink water. He's the drinker. He drinks carbonated soda. <laughs> so he drinks, he's the drinker. <laughs> yeah, we're, we, we really, we don't drink alcohol. Uh, nothing against it. All my friends do. And I'm a designated driver on frequent occasion. We don't drink, but those of you that do, I know it's not cheap. So you might want to figure that into your budget. If you'd like to eat out a lot, you'll have to figure that in your budget. That's right. We have, and it's common here. We hear people in our circle talk and say, I don't cook. (laughs) We eat out. You know, that's going to be expensive. Now, you know, these people that say, why, if there's only two of us, it's just as cheap for us to eat out. That is not true. You know, by the time you go out and, and eat and you'll leave a tip, you know, it's pretty expensive. So if you want to do that, you can budget it in. Um, how many times you're going to go out? How many times is lunch or breakfast or, or, or dinner? You know, all those are variables. And people ask us that question too. Uh, impossible to figure it out. It's impossible. If you go to dinner, you could spend 15 or $20 a meal. Uh, you could spend $40 a meal if you went to some of the places downtown. Uh, and if you do that three or four times a week, it can get really expensive. I'm going to say for us, both of us eating out, it's between $100 and $150 a week to eat out. Um, you know, you got seven days in a week. If you, you have seven lunches and seven dinners, you know, you may eat out for three or four of those. And, you know, that can come to $100 to $150 a week or $600 a month. So that's another thing that you'll want to budget in if you're trying to keep really close track of your finances and determine if you can move here or not. 
cars. Do you have one or two or three? Or like the guy down the road here that has four Corvettes. All stuffed in his garage. What? You know, uh, that's something that we've really enjoyed. We cut down to one vehicle from three mm -hmm. and we have very, very little in the way of automotive maintenance. So our bills in that regard are not high at all. But still, you're gonna have an occasional oil change and you're gonna have to buy some gasoline. And I would say, $20 a week, mm -hmm. which would come to about $80 a month is what we'll spend, yeah. if that. Yeah, we hardly use the car anymore. If you do have a car, you need insurance. Mm -hmm. Insurance seems like a waste of money sometimes, and if you're a good driver and you stay out of wrecks, you know, it feels that way. But we, don't, we wouldn't drive around the block without insurance. We really want to be insured just in case. Uh, and we have our one car insured. And that costs us about $1,000 a year to insure that with full coverage for collision and comprehensive and etc. And uh, we pay $80 a month, again, about $1,000 a year for car insurance. home maintenance. You're going to have some fees every once in a while. For us, we've done some uh, upgrades yeah. since we came here. So I'm not we're not figuring those at all into these these fees here, but little things around the house, for example, replacing the furnace filter, right. uh, light bulbs, uh, just odds and ends that you need to take care of. They're unpredictable. It's hard to get a good handle on how much you need. It's gonna be more sometimes, it's gonna be less sometimes. But for home maintenance, we're figuring somewhere between 50 and $100 a month, uh, $600 to $1,200 a year on home maintenance. If you have a relatively new home, no way to know. You can plug your own number in there, kind of give you an idea what works for you. Recreation. We all crave a good time. We want recreation. We want to go do things. Sometimes these have costs. You know, it could be going to a ball game or a polo match or the movies. Yes. Or uh, we bought, during the COVID section, we bought some bocce balls of our own and bought him a pool stick. So that was a little bit for recreation. Yeah, recreational costs. Maybe your recreation is to go to the country club, sit at the bar and, and knock back three or four you know, uh, you have to budget that in. For us, we kind of looked at it and we said, let's call it a hundred bucks a month, hundred dollars a month for recreation. Your numbers may be more or less. If you have golf carts, you're going to need to maintain them. And uh, depending on whether it's gas or electric, hope you saw our video, the, uh, <laughs> the showdown between the gas and the electric carts. If you have a gas cart, you're going to have uh, gas charges and they usually get about 250 miles per tank of gas, five gallons. So 50 miles to a gallon, that's not a great expense. And once a year, you're going to need to get your oil changed. Uh, that can be a do-it-yourself project, one quart of oil, or you can have it done. And uh, that may run like $75 to have somebody come to your house and change your oil. So something you need to budget in. I would say to insure that golf cart, you need an insurance policy in case you would hit a person on a bicycle or a, a, a pedestrian or, or wreck into somebody else's cart. You may want, like we, we have liability only. So if we hit, we would we'll take care of the other guy and we'll take care of ourselves. Uh, but that can cost between 15 and $20 a month for your gas, your maintenance and your insurance for your golf cart. What do you think about golf balls? Should people include golf balls in their budget? That's recreation. <laughs> golf balls are, uh, are expensive. If you've got a, uh, some, a dozen good Titleist golf balls, you could spend 40 bucks. Ah. That's over $3 a ball. Forget that. Um, <laughs> we lose them. If you, if you plan to uh, do, I mean, you'll need golf gloves, you'll need golf balls, so you can budget stuff like that in there. Golf balls is throwing money away. <laughs> if you lose a, a a middle of the road golf ball. It's 150. It's a, it's a dollar fifty down the drain. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you in the villages. If you go over to those weeds to look for your golf ball, 
you're gonna find another golf ball. Yeah, you will. You may not find yours, but you'll probably find another one. So, but still, if you uh, if you do want to buy golf balls, you could probably count on uh, twenty five dollars a month if you're the kind of person that has to play with new golf balls, unless you hit it really straight. I mean, for me, it's probably fifty dollars a month. But. Maybe yeah, maybe better start practicing. <laughs> She doesn't hit it far enough to lose a ball very often, but but she uses pink balls, by the way. Yeah, it does go in the water sometimes. <laughs> yeah, we, we carry a ball retriever all the time with uh, Linda's bag. You'll have to have a clothing budget. Now, I guarantee you, your clothing budget in Florida is gonna be less than it was in Minnesota, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, Indiana, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, wherever you're coming from, because down here, 340 days a year, you can wear shorts and a t-shirt. Yes. And that's what we do. So your, your budget for a clothing, we're not gonna include because that's strictly a matter of taste. You know, are you shopping at Macy's or are you shopping at Target? Are you shopping at Walmart? Or are you shopping at, you know, uh, Bells. Bells, or, you know, so we don't know about that, but don't forget to include some money because you will need to buy some uh, items of clothing from time to time. And when you put it all to pencil and paper and try to make your budget, don't forget you're gonna have some medical bills. Now, if, you're, if you have Social Security and you're on Medicare, you know, you're gonna have Medicare charges. You're gonna have maybe co-pays at the doctor. You're gonna have prescription charges. I have no idea what your charges would be for those, and we can't even predict. So you do those on your own, but don't forget that you will have those kinds of charges. vacations and travel impossible to predict we budget a little money out of each paycheck that we get to a, a bank account to spend on vacations and you know it depends on where you're going are you wanting to go overseas you'll need to to have a bigger budget for that are you just wanting to go to Miami you know that could be a, a overnight or a couple of days mm -hmm. If you go to Alaska, you know, you're going to you're going to have a big or a cruise, you know, you'll need to budget more money. So we're not going to include anything for travel, but that will be something that you want to consider. And we have taken these things that we've told you and we have added them up for you to get a, an idea of a grand total. Remember, in this total, there's no mortgage. There is no bond payment which you would have if you bought a new home. And there's no medical. And there are, are things that would be unique to you that won't be included. But our grand total for a monthly payment for us, as best we could figure, is $2,749. $2,749 per month to live here in the villages. And that would equate to about $33,000 a year. So those are numbers for us. As we keep saying, your numbers will differ. You know, we, we love you guys and it, doing this blog is one of the greatest things we've ever done. We've met so many wonderful people. Sure have. And we get people on a, if not daily, then several times a week basis that tell us, hey, we moved here because of you guys. Now they're kind of joking and kind of not joking. Yeah. So, you know, we're not trying to convince anybody to move here. We're just bringing stuff to the table to show you. We had no idea how much it would cost to live here when we came, and we're pleased with what we have found. You know, it's doable for us, but we're not millionaires. You know, that's a typical feeling about people in the villages that they are loaded with money. That's not true. There are people here that, that are loaded with money, but a lot of people are just like us in our circle of friends people that worked hard and saved and bought a house in the villages. You know, they may not have a penny in the bank, but they've got a house in the villages and a monthly income to keep it going. So we're pleased and uh, we think it's doable here. It's easier when your house is paid for. And uh, you know, that's a good thing when you can, when you can plan ahead and get your house paid for. That's what we did in Indiana and we sold everything we owned there and we're able to buy a house down here. We hope that this total helps you. We're glad to do it for you. I hope you got something out of it. We appreciate each and every one of you that watches. And press that subscribe button. 
if yeah, you haven't already. That really helps. We're almost at 18,000 subscribers. You know, uh, I don't know how long we'll keep this channel going, but wouldn't it be great to get 100,000 subscribers someday? Ooh, got a lot of friends. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. Until next time. See you when you get here.